The trilobite Heptopus tabularium is the third stage of the species catalogued under the title of Protoxenomorph XX033. Studies across the middle heavens have shown a few instances of its creation and it is in general a unique and unusual creature that is sparsely understood. So today this overgrow facehugger is the focus of Project Acheron's data log. Whilst there are slight variations in these creatures' form, there are a number of commonalities between them that we can use to explore their physiology. Covered in a pale whitish skin and possessing a number of tentacle appendages, the trilobite structure appears cephalopod in nature. Upon its birth it resembles more of a squid, facehugger-like form with four small tentacles as it grows it becomes likely more akin to octopi as its body enlarges. The, the creature's developmental period from infant to adult is extremely rapid and results in the creature growing in mass. From something the size of a human fetus into something large enough and physically powerful enough to not only wrap completely around a nine-foot engineer, but exceed its size overpower it and smother it completely. Aside from a collection of now seven large pincer tipped tentacles on the rim of its body that are primarily for locomotion and offense, defense, there are six smaller tentacle like appendages that can propel from the creature's underside. These thinner fleshy pink appendages are used to grasp and or restrain a potential host for implantation by the creature's ovipositor. This ovipositor implants a packet of genetic materials of the species Plagiarus noxipator leading to a growth within the host forming the fourth stage of the creature, colloquially known as the deacon. The underside near this ovipositor also possesses a set of long sharp teeth. While the purpose of which are currently unclear, the project's best guess as to their use would be something tied to possibly removing obstructions to the host's orifice. With no eyes inside it's unclear how the creature hunts for a host, it could cue of scent markers in the air or through electrical signals generated by the host's body. It's unclear exactly how they navigate their surroundings, but from all studies obtained so far, you want to put as much distance between yourself and these beasts as possible because if they are able to locate you, a fate worse than death awaits. The trilobite possesses basic intelligence. Like their facehugger cousins though it is limited only really to their sole purpose of seeking out a host and procreation. From the few studies we have of these beasts, we have seen a very driven yet single-minded focus on their desire to act on simple instinct. This drive is exacerbated by an intense aggressiveness and hostility to all non-botanical life forms. In comparison to the facehugger the trilobite does not leap on the face of a victim, Partly due to the sheer size of this creature, the beast will instead use its powerful tentacles to wrap around and hold a host in place. At this point its smaller appendages shoot out from its body and wrap around the head of the host, securing them in prime position of the creature's ovipositor to penetrate the given orifice. From this point the creature basically lays down on the host, securing its victim in place using its incredible mass and likely supplying them with respiratory gases through a number of holes on its back. After it has completed its task of implanting a host, the trilobite will eventually slump off its victim to allow them to give birth to the fourth stage of the species' life cycle, the before-mentioned deacon creature. How specifically and where this species originates from is currently little understood. It's, it's most likely that this species is a natural and a likely possible outcome of human infection by varying types of the engineer's genetic accelerant and its molecular interactions with Homo sapiens DNA. This is due to the fact that both times these creatures have developed is in two completely isolated events and under wildly different circumstances. The true life cycle path of this species is yet to be determined so it will be easier to recount each one separately before attempting to even theorize the potential natural life cycle of these beasts. The first of which, currently under designation Protoxenomorph XX033 was first seen generated on the moon of LV223 through a number of seemingly chance conditions. The synthetic David A, a part of the Prometheus expedition in 2093, would recover samples of the engineer's genetic accelerant and opted to test it on another member of the expedition, one Dr. Charlie Holloway. David A spiked a cold beverage of Dr. Holloway's with a drop of the accelerant. After consuming the drink, Dr. Holloway would begin a round of genetic mutations. This would start slowly due to the small amount of mutagenic accelerant in his body. While eventually transforming Holloway into an anathema, it also would mutate any bacteria or parasitic life forms within his body into worm like life forms. These macroscopic worms would begin to work their way out of Holloway's tissue and body and could infect anyone that came into contact with them. Holloway was unaware of his infection, and so after his drink, 
He met up with and slept with Dr. Elizabeth Shaw inadvertently infecting her with at least a single one of the worms. After entering her womb, the creature would develop and grow at an alarming rate into a large squid-like creature, reaching the size of a three-month-old human fetus within her uterus within a few hours. Eventually, Shaw begins to feel physical pain due to the developing creature. The immense pain drove her to seek the use of the ship's med pod to conduct a surgery to remove the creature that was growing close to bursting out from her body tearing her apart. It's not clear whether or not the creature would eventually move out from the vaginal canal, but due to the fact the host's survival is not a necessary factor, it's likely it would result in their death. The removal though is successful. The trilobite is seen to have developed a type of parasitic umbilical cord likely used to fuel the creature's rapid growth through nutrients stolen from its host. Following its removal, Shaw attempted to activate a decontamination in the med pod to kill the creatures. However, it's only later that she would come to realize that the beast had simply been momentarily incapacitated. Upon later returning to the now crashed USCS S Prometheus lifeboat containing the med pod used by Shaw earlier, she is now pursued by a lone engineer. When entering, she notices that within the medical room, the creature was not just alive but grown to an enormous size, breaking free from the med pod and moving about behind the pressure door. As the lone engineer marched on her position and moves to kill her, Shaw opens the medical bay door, releasing the creature from its holding, and it immediately moves to attack and subdue the engineer. It does this with impressive speed and ease, considering the physical feats demonstrated by the engineer when dispatching other members of the Prometheus expedition. The trilobite once restraining the limbs of the engineer ejects its long proboscis, ovipositor-like organ into the mouth of the engineer and down its throat, beginning the impregnation process. After a short period the trilobite would remove itself from the engineer, slumping to the floor lifeless and having completed its life's task. Eventually the engineer would begin to convulse and writhe on the floor as the razor-sharp head dome of a creature developed within it burst through its chest cavity and forced its body out of its host. A creature come to be known as the Deacon and the fourth stage of the species Proto-Xenomorph XX033, which we will explore in a future data log. The second known occurrence of the trilobite and its species life cycle was on the Erebos Plasma Station in the 26 Draconis system studying the recently formed black hole in the system and its effects on the surrounding planet and wildlife. In the, in the chaos of its formation, it ripped a nearby planet, LV-1113, apart. This had consequences that were yet to be fully understood by the researchers and inhabitants of the station. LV-1113 was home to an engineer installation, plentiful with the engineer's genetic accelerant that had been modified by members of the USCSS crew nearly a century earlier into potential vaccine against the development of a neomorphic parasite within a human host. This was largely a failure, but the now coined 26 Draconis strain was left behind by these scientists. When the planet was ripped apart, the local extremophilic viruses were subjected to the 26 Draconis strain of the engineer's genetic accelerant and ejected out into the void as the black hole swallowed up the majority of the planet. This left behind this new life form that shouldn't be able to exist, where life should not be able to survive, and a mess of asteroids close by Erebos, categorized under the species name Luxaventum Hestalum. This new life form would form one of four subspecies that would come together to form the Proto-Xenomorph XX033D or Draconis variant of the species and its life cycle's technical stage zero. Whilst very poorly understood, this viral microscopic life form has the ability to spread not only through living biological systems, but also through circuitry, electrical and circulatory systems alike. Being this strange virus were able to compromise synthetic life forms as well as electrical or computer systems within StarCraft or in this case, Erebos Station. Once Luxaventum hestalen has infected either organic or inorganic materials, it begins to morph into the first official stage of the XX033D's life cycle, Alvenventum Erebos. This self-replicating parasitic growth moves through physical matter, indiscriminate of its being organic or not. It seemingly is able to develop multi-chemical processes to fuel its metabolism and reproduction. Studies have shown this biological growth use potent acidic resin secreting tendrils to break down matter, including metals and plastics, transforming the materials into usable biomass. The end result, like what was observed within Erebos, was something terrifying. Inhabitants of the station reported something akin to the station becoming alive and swallowing up individuals to add them to its growing biomass. A living biomechanical structure to the truest sense of the word, nicknamed the proto-hive, it was similar to the function of the Xenomorph XX121's hives in that it would be used to hold hosts 
and once done with them break down their bodies to fuel its growth. This proto-hive seemingly didn't require members of the hive to bring it materials for growth but could instead capture its own prey and add to its own biomass. Truly the stuff of nightmares. Once this tendril growth begins moving through something like the station there is little to no way to stop it. Attempting to cut or incinerate the growth will only result in the vein or artery-like vessel within the growth to rupture, at which point a gout of acidic blood or digestive bile will flow out from the wound and cause massive damage to the surrounding areas. In the case of the Erebos, a big enough wound would likely result in the station hull being breached and vented into space. The tendrils as stated previously could reach from the walls, floors or ceilings of the station whilst growing, and once detecting prey, would wrap around them, incapacitate them and secure them to the rest of the growth to be digested or injected with the genetic materials of one of the four subspecies Heptopus tabularium. This forces the host DNA to begin a metamorphosis into a biomass nicknamed Wombats. Similar to the XX121 overmorphing process, the hosts forming these cocoons are morphed into translucent euteropods, growing within them to the next horrific stage of the life cycle. After the metamorphosis process concludes, the Wombats or euteropods burst. This occurs due to the creature within them outgrowing its housing, spilling their amniotic fluid contents to the floor as they give birth to the second stage of their life cycle, the naiad, or the squid baby. Appearing nearly identical to the infant trilobite that Dr. Elizabeth Shaw had removed from her body on the Prometheus, these squid babies as they have been nicknamed are the infant stage of the subspecies Heptopus tabularium. Whilst still small and seemingly harmless, don't underestimate these creatures. Whilst they have only four tentacle-like limbs at this stage in their development, each possess the grip strength of a vice and you don't want to be caught in its grasp. Inhabitants of Erebos were observed having their head crushed under their limbs when threatened or suffocated to death by being smothered and dragged away to add biomass to its proto-hive. These squid babies are also fast and agile, attempting to capture one is tricky and killing them can be even harder. But if you have any chance it's going to be with the use of a firearm or incinerator unit, if you're fast enough to sight the squids up. Whilst willing to fight the creature will more often than not evade confrontation and escape to a safe secluded spot to continue its development into the third stage of its life cycle. The third stage of the creature Heptopus tabularium also known as the trilobite, is a 3 meter tall monstrosity and has had its four original limbs separate into seven larger, longer, and more powerful ones. Its growth rate from infant to adult has baffled researchers for decades and has even put the likes of the species Plagiarus prepotens to shame. Like described earlier in the data log, this trilobite is basically the facehugger of this species and exists to the carry the next stage of the species life cycle to a host organism and forcibly implant them with the genetic material, using its colossal biological advantageous traits. Those that have witnessed these creatures reproduce are left feeling sick and violated themselves. If the, if the creature is able to grasp you it's either going to use its multiple powerful tentacles to rip you apart with ease or restrain you and ram a meter long 12 centimeter thick phallic proboscis down your throat. Following its successful penetration via its oral proboscis and protecting and sustaining the host using its own body, it will eventually die and slump off and leaves way for the fourth and currently last known stage of the species life cycle to emerge. However, instead of discussing that creature in this data log, I plan to make a follow-up where the project will cover that creature in greater detail. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, Jack Fleming Jr. and Scott Jardine, or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia and Vladimir Chernikov. But until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.